Hola, what's up guys? Buenas noches. John here con Kylie. Salud. She made us our mango margaritas and then it's frozen. Hers is in a Barbie Chela, Michela, Michelada. Man, we went to a fair the other day and uh, this shit was over $30 for this cup with a drink inside. I thought that was kind of expensive, especially for Mexico. When they said the price, I was like, wow. And so, well, then we're using it for our, oh, it even says Barbicello, Barbicella. So now it's a Barbirita for Margarita, but Barbie Margarita. So good. And so today we got something kind of funny, but at the same time, a lesson that we all can learn from because this guy obviously hasn't watched any of the videos that I put out and he's gonna learn the hard way. And so one of my buddies in the Jedi Master inner circle, he sent me this, this photo this morning. It says, Middle Eastern man proposes to a stripper at Hong Kong and she says yes. And then uh, there's a, a close up photo. I'm gonna show up the closer uh, so you guys can see. And editor put that up on the screen. You can see the tattoo on her back. Look at the smile on his face as he looks up. He goes down on one knee on the stage, ask her to do it. This is uh, this looks like the stage in the second new bar that they opened, the second section they opened on the other side behind the Miami room. And so guys, if you're coming down, a lot of you have like found my channel. Like I got a mix of like people, a mix of you guys finding me from different uh, topics that I've covered. And so this might be new to you. So you have no idea what this place we're talking about, Hong Kong. Hong Kong is the name of a bar, strip club, brothel in Tijuana that's famous for having hundreds of girls. And then you can have like uh, your honeymoon with any one of these girls. Less than you can have a date in America. Less than what you can go out on a date, you'll get the, the end goal over there. And that's why it's world famous and a lot of people have been there and traveled from all over the world to come down. And like a lot of people sleep on it because it's so close to America that they feel like, oh, it's, it's uh, they, they travel further places when they don't know that just in America's backyard, it's right there. It's, it's, it's uh, easy access to Latin America, a, a, a Latin America fun pastime. And so I'm a, a go over this so you can see the guy's middle eastern and uh the girl obviously typical girl that works there tattoos everywhere she's her whole back is tatted up and so you can see typical girl that works there at the club and then typical type of sucker simp from america and so there's a lot of lessons we can learn from this guys like i preach this in a lot of my videos that these type of girls at these clubs, when they work there, they're only good for recreational use, not for long-term relationships. You can have your short-term relationship with them for like 30 minutes, the hour, or the day, the two, the two days, however long you're with them, that's as, as long as you should keep that relationship going. Or you keep it longer, but don't turn it into something serious like this where they become like a long-term girlfriend or a, a wife especially, because that's not gonna turn out good. Like something happens to a girl's mind when they start working this type of work. Like sex to them no longer becomes sacred and it they just become numb to it. It's no longer special, it's no longer important. They can close off their mind to just have sex with anybody, any random weird guy, you know, <clears throat> like this guy. Like normally, this girl wouldn't be going out with that guy. You know, does he even speak Spanish? We don't even know if he speaks Spanish. So how are they communicating? Are they gonna have a relationship just <coughs> using Google Translate the entire time? That's not a real relationship, you know? And so how real of a connection can you possibly have? And like coming from completely two completely different backgrounds and you not being able to communicate with the girl, I hope he can speak Spanish, like for his sake, or Hopefully she speaks English, like good enough English to where uh, they can commute. Put this the little baby. All right, well, I'm gonna take a break real quick because she has this bong ready for me that she prepared. She's so nice. 
She prepared the mango margaritas, and then she prepared the bong, prepared the joints. And this is the kind of lovely treatment that you're gonna get outside of America. Like it's very rare that you're gonna find girls that are like wanting to please you and do things for you to make you happy. And so, yeah, what I was saying is for his sake, for both of their sakes, I hope he can speak Spanish and I hope she can speak English. That way, if it's for real, you know, like if they really love each other, cause it's very rare that they can actually love each other. And like the girl obviously um, is just like any girl, wants a better life, wants the best possible provider. And most likely she has kids. A lot of these girls work at this type of work because they're single moms and it's very rare that you're gonna find girls that are that, that don't have kids that work this type of job and that always fascinates me. I always interview them and like ask them questions like, why are you here if you don't have kids and you don't really need to be doing this, you know? And their reasons always like make me interested because they have different reasons for school or they got something that they wanna invest in or their family's relying on them. Or some just like the lifestyle, what they see on social media, what they want, what they think that it's going to be like all glamorous and stuff. So they, there's a whole number of reasons, different reasons as to why girls without kids will get into that. But majority of the time, I would say like more than 80 to 90 percent of the girls over there have kids. So that's probably like eight or nine out of 10 girls working there have kids because you know, they get left like in other countries where there's no child support or nothing like that. These girls, they make a bad decision. They get pregnant by their young broke boy, that young broke Chad, the young broke Chad that they uh, thought they fell in love with. They let him, they have sex with him easily. And uh, the guy gets him pregnant because he's dumb. He doesn't know anything. Then he dumps the girl and uh, <coughs> disappears once he finds out she's pregnant and hides or uh like doesn't want to show himself to be not he doesn't want to be responsible for it and so that's what happens and then what are they supposed to do they got this kid their job that they're working like as a waitress or like a dental assistant or a receptionist doesn't cut doesn't cut it for their expenses to take care of themselves and pay for their living expenses and to pay for the kid which is like what normally three four five hundred dollars a month working these jobs you know and so that doesn't cut it for them and so they're getting desperate and out of desperation they turn to this they have a girlfriend that gets in and the girlfriend tells them hey you should work here you make this much instead of what you make in one week you can make it in 30 minutes so that's very hard for them to resist the temptation of like uh doing this type of work because it's easy they've already been doing sex because they had a kid obviously they enjoy doing it but then at first, when they start, they feel weirded out and like uh, they don't they don't feel comfortable. They feel disgusted. But then after a few times, it, their mind goes numb to it, and something happens to them where they're just in this environment where everyone's doing it. They're surrounded by it, so they feel like it's normal. That to them becomes normal, and then they hit the corruption stage that I like to call it, where their mind becomes corrupt, and they're so used to it, nothing, nothing. Uh, it's no longer sacred. It's no longer special. So you're giving it to everybody who has $100 or whatever they're, they're paying. And how is this guy, how is this guy special? You know, he's going to pay the most. He's going to support her. He's probably going to petition her and her entire family. She's going to be, he's going to be taking over a, a kid that's not his. He's going to be supporting a kid that's not his. And just, how, or maybe multiple kids where, or multiple kids from multiple dads. You know, I've seen it all. And so this is so common in places like this. And this guy is making a huge mistake. And this is what the problem is because the lack of options in America makes him turn to this as an option to where now he has to uh, marry. His best option is a, I don't know how we want to call it, a working girl, I'll call it that. A working girl in another third world country that he fell in love with who's been every day you know, having one to three to six or seven clients in one day where it's nothing to them and they're just whatever that was supposed to be special for your partner 
is for everyone. They become, that's what I call them. Like they become public property at that point and they're pretty much gonna go with anybody that pays their fee. And so she no longer can think normally, just like my friend that I asked, she said that I, I asked her, I said, so what now? She's all, well, I can't go back to working a normal job after this. There's no way I can do that. And it's like, that's what happens. Like once they do that and they see how easy it is for them to make that kind of money in 30 minutes versus working eight hour shifts for an entire week straight, working 40, 50 hours a week to make a hundred dollars, they can do it in 30 minutes. And so to them, they're gonna bypass the disgustingness and the feelings they feel and whatever. And then since so many people around them are doing it, they feel like it's okay and that's like just a normal way of life, which it kind of is a normal way of life because it's kind of accepted in places like Latin America, Southeast Asia, Europe, where everywhere it's kind of accepted, except in America and like other countries where it's, it's kind of like illegal and looked down upon. And so that's what I'm saying. Like these are the worst kind of girls for you to be with. Like they have so many options. They're used to so much money being thrown at them. You know, how's this guy gonna please her unless he's rich, you know, like Middle Eastern guys usually got money and come from well off families. Not all of them, but that's what they're known for, you know? And so that's why like, maybe that's why she does want to get with the guy. Maybe she was just, he was just a sucker sugar that on her list that she was ju stringing along like the rest of them. So like. Here's what I've observed. Like a lot of these girls, they got more than one sucker sugar that's sending them money every month and helping them. And they think that the girl's being loyal or stop working and being faithful to him. But in actuality, she's still working a lot of the time or she's seeing broke boys or she's like getting money from two, three, four, five guys that all think that she's like actually cares about them and loves them. and. And these guys know know nothing because they're, they haven't had enough experience. And so that's why I like to say, like, guys always find my channel when it's too late. After the damage is done, then they find me. Or they see me, they find the channel and watch a couple videos, but they don't, they don't pay attention, you know. They feel like since they don't really see it or they haven't been around it, they don't pay attention. So they don't know the dangers that lurk when you get into a long-term commitment with these type of girls. And they uh, take advantage and like later on, he's probably gonna find out that she's still communicating with people, her old clients or like friends, or she, she's getting bored. If she takes, if he takes her to back to America and she gets bored, like let's say he lives in some fucking Midwest town in the middle of nowhere in America, small, some small town or whatever, or even, it doesn't even matter, even a big city, they're gonna get bored because it's not where they're from, they don't know anybody, their family's not there, their friends are not there, you kind of took them out of the jungle and kind of put them in a cage. I always like to say that these girls are like wild animals, you can't take them out and you can't tame them. And it's a big mistake. You know, you're taking a lion out of the jungle, which is like this kind of work, and then you're bringing them into your place where it's boring and she has no friends, her family's gone, she has nowhere to go, she doesn't know anybody. You, she's pretty much become your slave or your property at that point. And then what ends up happening, they, they, they're not happy. They end up making friends over there and they might end up uh, meeting the next, the, the next broke Chad locally over there and then start doing shit with them over there. And when they, when they have social media, they're always getting messages. And with their old clients, you know, they might still go see. Like I see it all the time. Like I got all these girls that I met at the bars and they got sucker sugars and they don't work at the bar no more because the sucker sugar is paying for their place. They live down the street from me. They got nice high rise apartments, condos and stuff in front of the beach. And so like these girls, when the guy's not around, they're messaging me asking what I'm doing and wanting to come over and smoke weed. And they'll bang if, they, if, 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 uh, if I want to bang, they're down to bang. And so like, that's the kind of thing, like I'm telling you guys, I see it from both sides and it ain't a good idea. Like you may think like, oh, my girl's at home when you're one of these sucker sugar simps and you're paying for the girl supporting her and you think she's at home being loyal, but dude, they're out. And what do they say? They're out with the girlfriend or the guy's calling. They fucking laugh while the guy's calling and they let the phone ring. And then they say they're with their friend or they're busy or the one they say all the time, I fell asleep or there was no signal, you know, like these are the dumb reason and the guys believe it because they think my girl would never do that. She's different. You know, but they're, they're more alike than they are different. And so 
you know, like I see it. So these girls are, they're not going to stop just because you're supporting them and you're giving them everything you think that they would need. I see these guys buying these girls cars, you know, nice cars, uh, paying for nice uh, apartments or houses for them to rent, taking care of another kid. And you see it like that's what they're doing. And they think the girl's being loyal, but majority of the time they're not. I'm not saying that all of them are not, are not going to be loyal. I've seen a couple where they're loyal, but majority, like I said, maybe eight or nine out of 10, or let's say eight out of 10 are not going <clears> to, <throat> when you leave them alone and you're working and they're here, still living here, they're doing shit. They might even still work behind your back just because they're bored and just to get extra money if the money that the guy's giving is not enough. And so, you know, but yet she's still doing that and she could still be collecting money from the other guys. They all live a life that you have no idea about. And so that's why like, I want you guys to learn from this guy's mistake. He even went as far as to do the proposal inside the club. You know, what kind of guy does that? And like, is that, I don't know, man. Like I'm trying to look at it from his position. Like, does he feel proud? How, does he feel like that was dope? For him to go there and uh, propose to her in front of all the people that she knows and for all of us, for the person that took this picture that went, went, it's becoming viral now, for us to all like judge him and laugh at him and look at the mistake he's making when all of us that do know that this is a mistake, we're all laughing and being like, what the hell? Whereas other guys that don't know that are suckers like that, that are dating, think that that might be cool. You know, I'm just trying to look at it from his position and see his reasoning for why he would do that. You know, like if you're the guy that's in this photo and you're watching this or you happen to see this or one of his friends, if you're one of this guy's friends, reach out to me because I'd like to interview him or interview you if you're the guy watching and like kind of like see it from your position so you can like explain your side and see what we're not seeing, you know? And I hope that it's one of the rare, very rare cases that where this can work out well, you know? Like for the ones that I've seen work out well, where the girls that I've like partied with and you know, we smoked weed and some of them didn't have kids, you know, these young hot girls that were working there and I've hung out with them, gone out with them and they're really cool. And I've seen them get married. The ones that I've seen successful are the ones where they marry like a, a Mexican guy, like a, a well-off Mexican guy. And the guy doesn't have any idea that the girl worked this kind of job. Like this path, this part of her life is a secret. And this is where these girls uh, delete all the people that were on their social media. Like the, like I had this one girl, she had over 30,000 followers and uh, she got a sucker sh sugar uh, that she married. And she went one by one and manually deleted all of the followers that she didn't know. But like for some reason I'm always left there as one of the friends, like a normal friend, instead of like a, a, a client that they would consider like a client where they just delete them. And so I still get to see their lives and I've, I've witnessed a handful of the girls and the thing that's different about them, they didn't marry a, 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 a foreigner where it becomes successful. They married like a, a well-off like local guy and the guy has no idea. You can tell like when I see it that the guy comes from a good family, they're well off and they have nice houses and stuff. And, uh, you know, like the girl is super happy with the guy as, as literally in love, you know, but that's because they share something in common. They could speak each other's language. They uh, have similar backgrounds. And whereas this usually doesn't work out, usually the, the girl's just marrying this guy, like this guy, the mid Middle Eastern guy for, for uh, financial, for, for her security. You know, and like how often you see a Middle Eastern and a Mexican get together. It's not very often. And that's why I'm saying like if they can't communicate, if she doesn't speak English or he doesn't speak good Spanish, then it's not really a real connection. It's not a deep connection to the point to where you fall deeply in love and you want to marry, you know, like that's like I said, if you're with a girl, there has to be like a connection emotionally where you can't connect emotionally if you can't communicate your thoughts, your ideas, what you, the things you guys both like doing and things you have in common, it, your connection is not going to be that strong or that deep. And so, you know, that's why I'm saying like majority of the time it doesn't, it doesn't work. And 
in a couple years if she gets to the U U.S. and uh, you know, most of the time these guys won't even do a prenup because they think the girl really loves them. And then after a few years, when it's time where she can juice the most and divorce, done. It's going to be done, and her and her kids are set. And even her family might even be petitioned and be living with them while she does all this stuff. And so, you know, it's like, like I said, if if you're the guy reach out to me or one of the friends reach out to me. I'd like to interview the guy and see, you know, how it went down, how long have you guys been together and uh, what made you fall for this girl and why are you doing this <clears throat> when I'm not sure if you're aware or the guy's aware of his percentage, his chances of it not being successful are very high that uh, it's not gonna last or uh, one of them's not gonna be happy and if, if it's her not happy she can pretend for a while you know until she can't take it anymore and that's when maybe it might blow up and they might get in a big fight one day and she's just not gonna want to be with him and go back or is it one of those relationships where she's just gonna still stay in Mexico while he still stays over there I've seen marriages like that where the girl still lives in Mexico while the guy lives in America and comes back often to just once in a while to see her because he has to work and she doesn't want to live there but then I've also seen where some guys have married the girl and brought her over there and you know like it it it, it can all vary but for the most part majority of the time it's not gonna uh, the girl's not in it for you she's not in it you know like all up, what's up guys had to interrupt the video to bring you guys an important announcement a lot of you guys watching i've been receiving tons of messages from guys that are virgins that haven't been laid yet that want to get laid and maybe guys that have already been laid but they're not getting access to girls where they're at so they want to get laid still you know these guys are getting taken advantage of reaching out to escort strippers or whatever they're reaching out to wasting all that money if you really need help that bad and you want to do it that bad reach out i'll help you guys we'll just discuss whatever it is that you're facing it can also be other stuff maybe you're heartbroken and need advice or need something to help you get over that heartbreak maybe you have a wife or a girlfriend where you feel like she's cheating on you or things just aren't the same i can help you analyze the situation and get over it i've gone through a lot of relationships already with girls from all over the place all over the world different places you know so i've seen all the things that they do been in long-term relationships so i know what a marriage feels like i know what divorce feels like i haven't been divorced but in a long-term relationship to where I felt like divorce pretty much and so I've seen a lot of people go through it and I can help you guys that are going through these type of things too if you need help maybe like going to another place I can put you in touch with people in different places in part of my network or find people that are viewers as well that can help that's why I'm doing this to get the word across of the things that I can help you with not just that if you own a business and you're accepting credit cards and you're still paying the fees you don't got to pay the fees no more you're pretty much just throwing your money in the trash you can better off just using it on yourself splurging taking a vacation enjoying like this in a pool in a tropical location somewhere where there's nothing but palm trees around and tropical birds that kind of stuff where the weather's perfect you could be doing that instead or if you know have some friends or family that own businesses that are still wasting their money paying the fees you now i'll be able to help so i can help with a number of things and i'll be glad to you know put you guys in the right direction same thing if you guys got want to go to costa rica i got friends out there cancun i got friends down there philippines i got a lot of friends out there so if you guys need help on any of that stuff reach out I'll be glad to put you in contact so that way you can have a better experience all around. And like I said, if you have, need help with any of the stuff that I mentioned before, let me know. I'll be glad to help you to achieve your goal. All right. Talk to you guys soon. Adios. Budavid. The guy seems like he's all right looking, you know, he doesn't look like he's ripped or like a Chad or anything like that. So obviously she's not with him as the way she would be like attracted to like a, a, a broke Chad, you know, but he who knows how his personality is we don't know if he's got a great personality and is like super funny makes her feel good makes her laugh and makes her feel special that can be an, another reason but most of the most of the time especially like i said he's middle eastern it's going to be financial so you know that's why i wanted to share this because it it, it it's kind of like a joke but it's not a joke because we can learn a lot of stuff from it and prevent this like if i prevent one of you guys from making this mistake then this video has done its job and it's well worth it to save one person's life. And so 
I'm gonna, uh, I think that's all the lessons. Let me, let me think if there's any other lessons. Um, you know, like, I have a friend that was about to do this, but thank God he didn't. And now he's married to like, he's a, a, a well-off Korean dude. And he was in love with a girl that, uh, that I was dating before. And he actually reached out to me on social media because he's all, who is this guy? He's like, I was like in a lot of the pictures with her everywhere. And I was like, he's like, he saw me everywhere. He's all, hey man, he's all, uh, you were dating this one girl. Can I ask you some questions? You know, cause like, she's my girlfriend now. And so he just randomly reached out to me. He found my social media cause like uh, on her social media. And that's how we connected. We actually became pretty close. And uh, he owns a bunch of businesses in the US and he's now going to marry a rich Korean, which he was about to marry this girl, but the girl fucked up because she couldn't stop partying. She loved partying. She loved the life too much. She didn't want to stop and he was going to take care of her and her daughter and all that stuff and, you know, uh, give her the good life. But some of these girls, they love the partying way more. They love the, the fast life more than they do value like their security or their future. And so, now she's pregnant with another dude who she doesn't love. I've talked to her. Uh, she's with a Puerto Rican guy. The guy's uh, pretty well off, and uh, he wants to marry her, but she doesn't want to marry him because she's not doesn't love him. But they had a kid together, and he supports the kid, but he doesn't want to be. She doesn't want to be with him. So you could see like from how these girls feel uh, about guys, and like I get to hear it, the actual truth because I'm close with them, and they they open up to me and tell me from their point of view how they feel without having to worry because you know I'm not like I'm not friends with the guy I don't know the guy you know and whatever they tell me I'm gonna keep it private to myself you know for because they trust me enough to tell me that kind of stuff and so like I saw that and he was about to uh, I sent this picture to him I said that was supposed to be you with her you know and uh I'm glad he didn't. He has a kid now with his new girl that he's married and more of like his same culture, same same backgrounds. They're both well off and that's more of like who the better choice and the better partner would be for a marriage or a long-term relationship, not not getting with one of these girls. Like I said, these girls are only good for temporary fun, having, you know, your fantasies fulfilled and getting it out of your system to party and have an awesome time, but having them as a, a, a wife or the mother of your kids it's not especially like if you're gonna have kids with them what kind of kids are you gonna have the, the girl has been doing drugs and drinking her job is to drink and sell drinks and have sex and they're doing drugs all the time you know as 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 a daily daily occurrence so how good are your kids gonna be she's picking which weed that we're gonna smoke because I got like six different weeds I got six uh, different kinds, and so I haven't even smoked some of these. Got it. She's already stoned. She don't want any more. She, hers is like she's all halfway done too, with my, like how I'm halfway done. But okay, I said she can't take any more bong hit. She said a joint she could take. Hacer una grande, una, una no grande pero de. She's gonna mix it up and make a joint. But anyways, guys, like I was saying, like my friend, how it turned out better for him since the girl, the girl actually did him a favor and like saved him because he was so in love with this girl. And uh, it's kind of funny that how we met uh, because we both dated her and shit, I could admit, like, I really liked her too, man. <clears throat> but uh, she got mad because I went out with another girl and she's like, I really liked you. You fucked it up. And she's all, you went out with that other girl? I said, yeah, why? What's wrong with that? And she's all, no, nope, that's it. You fucked up. And we're not seeing each other no more. I'm like, no, that's, that's messed up. And she's all, no, yeah, no. And I'm like, no, baby. And then uh, I still uh, saw, saw her after that, after she calmed down. But we weren't really like dating anymore, like how we, we, we were dating, where we were almost like boyfriend, girlfriend. Uh, we were just like now going out partying and uh, more of like close friends at that point. And so um, 
you know, I would even go out with them when he's in town and go party. And uh, that's how like me and the other dude became close. You know, it's kind of funny how I meet these girls, new boyfriends and they're cool with me, you know? And it's just that, I, like, I guess they know, like they don't gotta worry about me trying to bang their girl or whatever, because I've got my own girl and I've got my own girls. And so they know that and they don't have to feel threatened. And so we could actually just become like uh, friends, like homies, you know? And like, when you have a life of abundance, then these guys have nothing to feel like threatened about or like uh, that their girl's gonna like fall in love with me because I ain't trying to be with them, you know? And the more now that I got girls like her, it's like the more I would never be with like these kind of girls, you know? And so, um, you know, like I got, I got a lot of guys asking like, what, you met the girl's boyfriend? And I'm like, yeah, it'll be fucking cool. We're, we're like, we're good like that. You know, there's no, there's no like jealousy. There's no envy. There's no animosity or anything like that. Just cool. We talk, chop it up, you know, see what people are doing for business. Try to do some business deals, you know, because these girls, <clears throat> They usually are gonna choose like a guy that's pretty well off. So we you know we talk business. What are they doing, you know, and how how uh, they make money and stuff. And so we, that's what guys do that are like business minded. That's what we talk about. You know, I appreciate the outreach, the comments, and the emails. And if you can share these videos with a friend, or also at the very least, uh, just give it a like. It doesn't cost anything or take more than a half a second for you to click the like, because then what it does when you click like, YouTube will suggest the videos to other people that have the same interests as you. So that's kind of like how the whole algorithm works. And so that, that goes and helps a lot too, you know? Like if you're not writing comments or sending donations or whatever, pressing like and writing a comment helps greatly as well, you know, cause then YouTube will know that you find it useful and that it'll start suggesting, it'll know that it's a legit video that can help somebody and it'll start suggesting it to other people that are kind of like watching the same things that you're watching. And then it just, you know, then it, it helps more people. And then we could also talk about the girls and stuff too, you know? And so that's what I wanted to share. So I'm gonna read some of the comments that people were writing. Uh, it's kind of funny, like some of the comments. This guy writes, but did she finish her shift though? That's kind of funny, I'd like to know. Uh, this guy writes, to each their own at this point, shit trifling. This, this he said I can save her, and he meant it. Her pimp is about to be the richest man in Mexico. This one wrote, <clears throat> she went from naked to face covered real. Ha, <laughs> face covered, meaning like Middle Eastern, how she went from naked to having to like cover her face and cover her entire body. The tattoo on the back is an L. When's the date? Better than the 304s in LA, you can't wipe them up. There's no difference. Uh, well, no, I guess he's. I guess he's right. The, the Latinas will, down here will be better than the 304s in LA, or anyone, any any 304s in America for that matter. This guy writes only to find out he has 11 more. Pero lo bueno es que tengo salud. Ya las moritas vendrán viva la soltería. Uh, she's only gonna find out that he has 11 more, but it's good uh, that he's got the health and the girls come and live the single life. And this guy writes, Hong Kong, the love story of $72. Ha, huh, $72 was years ago. It ain't like that no, no more. It's like double the price now. This guy writes, she secured that oil money bag just cause he's Middle Eastern, you know, like the Arab oil money. That's funny. Comida China, meaning like Chinese food. Anything for that citizenship. The price of the kitty cat just went up, way up for that guy. And for the smart ones, like I said, that they're just enjoying, they're coming uh, and enjoying it for what it is. They're having fun, partying, getting fucked up and making like amazing memories by uh, just doing what it's intended for. They're not, it's not intended for you guys to find a wife here. They're not advertising brides down here, <laughs> you know? And some of you guys are coming down here, falling in love. Don't do it. It's all right to fall in love for the 30 minutes, the hour, or like I said, however long you're with them for. This guy, Cuba Dave, 
a long time ago had a saying, it's not yours, it's only your turn. So when you leave, the next guy that's in line takes his turn. And when you come back, you take your turn, your, your turn comes up and it's your turn to enjoy with the girl. So if you guys don't know who Cuba Dave is, check out his doc, there's a documentary about him. Uh, I, I suggest you guys watch it, it's pretty interesting. Um, secure the bag at any means, W for her, a win for her. She's for the streets, little bro. You know, everyone sees it, but him. The biggest L, L ever, like J. Cole says, she don't wanna be saved. Don't save her, she don't wanna be saved. Don't save her, she don't wanna be saved. That's the song. But who knows, she probably doesn't wanna be saved, but in reality, she ain't gonna be. Pray for my boy, this is a canon event. Who knows what that means? Uh, she finna get her own personal gas station, like making the joke about the Arab stuff. Damn, the entire Beijing district going crazy. Meaning like the Chinese, Hong Kong, Chinese, Comida, China area. Of course she did. Of course she said yes. She a 2006 salvage title due to theft. BMW 24.99 interest with a 6 plus previous owners with over 250,000 miles on the chassis and 80,000 on a new drive tra train. But, pero viva el amor, pero uh, li long live the love, which is true, he described it pretty right, like a pretty beat up uh, uh, luxury car <laughs> at a high interest rate with more multiple owners before it. This guy doesn't know, and it's a perfect like uh, analogy. I know two dudes who's done this on separate occasions. I know multiple guys that's done this. He don't give a fuck about 13 virgins goofy little nigga and then she got back to work oh my god i imagine that i want to know if that fucking happened but the way it looked she was dressed normal so the way i think it went down is that he brought her there to go out and have fun and party like a lot of these guys that date these girls they'll go there with the girl pay for her entrance and buy the, the beers because when they work there and you want to bring them there you got to buy them buckets of beers to have them uh be able to enter or buy one minimum minimum one bucket of beer and uh so they could go in so that's what i think what happened is that they went out there for a night out and to party and get messed up and then uh from the looks of it she went up on the stage so maybe she, he got her to dance on the stage and then he went up there and surprised her with this and so that's why i would love for this guy fucking whoever knows him reach out because i would love to interview him because i think a lot of the viewers like you guys would want to hear the actual backstory to this because I'm curious. Fu actually saved one. He didn't save one yet. He's about, he's trying to. As soon as I seen Middle Eastern, I know that Broad said yes. One private dance made him fall in love. How many fools out here have ran through her? Don't lie now. Too many guys, too many to count. These girls have no idea. Period, secure that gas station, sis. This girl wrote that. And then someone put a Kanye West uh, gift that says, Now I ain't saying she a gold digger. He knows she is. Half y'all married to them. And come to find out you're the side dude. If you know what I mean. So yes, it's a W for the homie and her. No, it ain't no W. It's only a W for her, not for him. And it'll be sad if he really thinks she's being loyal and then finds out that she still has... Or she might even have a boyfriend or a husband already, you know? That's pretty common. Alexa, play T-Pain. The song like, you know, I'm in love with a stripper. Middle Eastern guys exposed to this shit make them think they in love. Means that, means that he never touched a woman in his life. Could be, like what I said, like how stuff is in America, it's hard. Guys ain't getting laid. Guys not got no options. Hot girls. Uh, are sticking to like the top 10 20 percent of guys that are like good looking and rich and they don't even have to be rich just good looking and these guys are never gonna get with them so they end up getting ran through and it's the same thing she got tossed around like a hot potato men like hoes but they don't want their girl to be a hoe that's so true you know we like to have our fun with them and do our stuff with them and live our fantasies with them but we don't want our actual girl to be one like her i wouldn't want to be with her 
and like spend all this time and have her be so like important to me if she was like going around banging all these dot guys and like banging a bunch of oh shit the alexa i was like where's that music coming from alexa's playing fucking uh uh i, I fell in love with a stripper in the background it's kind of low but uh it's in the background i can hear it that's crazy for the spot tonight oh this is bartender it played bartender instead of i'm in love with a stripper this guy writes i seen a chino try to eat the pussy while a bitch was on stage bro this happens every day when they do these uh when they do these uh um foam shows and stuff brenda when they do the the foam shows and everything there's guys that'll do it and you just give them a dollar it's so amazing what a dollar can do you know and guys will do it they don't care where else can you do that for a dollar so they're taking advantage of it especially if they ain't trying to go up and they're on a budget that's the like quick get your uh kicks for a buck mr patel no <laughs> says bro is not middle eastern I think he looks like it uh one question how many visits did it take for him to fall in love that's actually a good question i would like to know like that's why i would like to interview this guy this guy writes i know that back tattoo anywhere I know a couple guys that wiped up some of them girls. This guy writes, he should have gone to Columbia better. He actually should have. He would have probably got a girl that's less ran through and that's going to be like more caring. I should turn, have it turn it up. Alexa, make it louder. <coughs> I guess it didn't hear me. Oh, it did. Alexa, make the volume louder. I don't know if you hear me. Oh, it did. Alexa, play I Fell in Love with a Stripper by T Pain. Just trying to find it. Oh, it found it. Alexa, make it louder. There you go. The, the perfect soundtrack. Actually, I should just put it on the fucking uh, speakers. <coughs> that way you guys can hear it because Alexa is not cooperating. Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alexa, turn off. This is this is for you, uh, Habibi. Where's the control? Hold on, I'll be back. I asked her if she knows this song. She said no. This was before her time, that's why. All right, should have gone to Columbia better, should have gone to anywhere better. This guy writes, that's haram, meaning like haram is a bad thing against their beliefs and their religion. At least she knows he's a hooker. Some dudes are clueless, but not all dancers do extra stuff. And this guy writes, right. Uh, but like I said, at this place, they do, you get your honeymoon. This, this is not no normal strip club, guys. That's why this place is famous. Google it. Or watch some of my other videos. Watch my top tips video. That shit will give you everything you need to know. It's called top tips for going to Hong Kong, I think. Ain't no difference than proposing to a woman from the States. They all 304, so might as well get one from HK that gets money. But it's worse. You're better off to get one from America, but the problem is they're gonna uh, take all your stuff when they divorce you. She get money, but she get money being public property and she's gonna stop getting money once you marry her. And if she makes money, that money ain't yours. Shit, this is the remix with Mike Jones. I forgot about Mike Jones. She was the affordable one at HK. That's fucking funny, guys. That's. Oh man, he about to get flipped for everything as he deserves. Oh, that's so sad, but it will happen. For the people that's wondering, this ain't Hong Kong, China. This is Hong Kong with the jackhammer with the dildo attached on the end. If you know what, you, what he's mentioning, then you know. Man, play another T-Pain song just to keep it going for you guys that's funny what this guy wrote it is there's so like 
There's a jackhammer that they got that goes and they got a dildo attached to the end of it. And then they can hand you the jackhammer and you just tip the girl and you're like there sitting in front of her with the jackhammer while her friend, her legs are spread open in front of you and it's going you know? Or the girls will do it on themselves. She smashed like 50 fools before he proposed. Oh my God. Maybe not 50, but maybe like a couple, three to five, one to five. Homie looks like he owns a couple motels. She scored everyone with the racial uh, profiling. I don't feel bad for the financial crisis he about to go through. These boys got to learn the hard way. This guy wrote, he can afford the L's. He can afford the losses. She obviously just going to marry for the money while she fucking other guys. So true. I just mentioned that guy. They don't stop. This guy writes, after 15,000 vergas, vergas, which means after like 15,000 dicks, that means dicks in Spanish. He'll learn the hard way. Even Jesus couldn't save these hoes. True. She tired of the life, so she wants to get her choncho arrest. It's true. These girls get tired, and this is their escape route. So that brings up a good point. Like, that's these girls' uh, exit strategies when they... Uh, want to get out of this because they have no idea they blow all the money they don't invest it they have nothing to show for it that they make they make so much money and it's all tax-free they don't do nothing with it and so that's this is their a majority of their like uh exit strategies to find a sucker sugar simp to save them and take them out of the club and she found it simp of the year goes to which is true he Logan paul that shit. Yeah, he did. If you guys don't know, Logan Paul just proposed to a, a 304, like a, one of those Instagram models. You know how these girls are, these attractive girls over there. They, they be sleeping around with all the celebrities and shit. And he just proposed to one. So it's no different from what this guy's doing. Just the equivalent on a different, a different scale. He thinks he can change her and that's most simps. That is so true. Or the thing that's even more, the thing that's more common is that Here's a popular line they always say, nah, this one's different. She's different. She's not like that. That's what they always say. So even if they don't try to change them, they try to claim like this girl's different. And that's the last of the comments. And so I thought that was interesting and funny at the same time and a good lesson and something for us to like all think about because don't be one of these guys, guys. And it doesn't matter whether it's here or in East Asia, or Europe, or like South America, Central America, doesn't make a difference. If they're in this industry working and they're public property, don't fucking do it. You know, you're trying to take a, a wild animal out of the jungle and you can't, you can't fucking take a, a <coughs> savage animal and tame them. It ain't gonna happen. Invest your time if you already making money, invest your time into your personality, into your uh, fitness, and try to find a normal girl instead. It'll work out much better. I'm not saying stop seeing them. I'm saying go and enjoy your time and fall in love for the time that you're with them, but don't make it any more than that. You're just gonna get got, and you're better off to like try to find girls like her that ain't about that life, that ain't about the money, that actually care about you and want to be with you because they enjoy your company and like want to be with you you know this girl's like wife and material like the stuff that she does to take care of me and everything all the girls that i have are like super cool and i've been super blessed and it's only because i've been exposed to that life and i got good at that life dealing with those girls to where when i when i met these girls it was it was uh a lot easier for me to deal with uh where it became easy for me to deal with them because I was able, so like here, here's what I'm gonna tell you guys, my advice. If you're like going to these clubs or participating in this life, use those girls as practice for you to get better. While you're working on your fitness, while you're working on your finances, use those girls as practice as for you to like, are you able to get them to like you for who you are and not make it so uh, transactional? Are you able to get them to like you, to go out with you without them expecting a shitload of money as if you're a client. 
that's what you need to work on. And when you can do that with multiple girls and have success with that, then you transition to using what you've learned from your like skills of like being able to, uh, you know, communicate, speak their language, relate to them, make them laugh, uh, give them advice. When you can do all that stuff and make them actually genuinely care for you, then that's when you uh, find those kind of girls for long-term relationships, you know? So that's my advice at closing this out on how to do it right and to what, it, what it's good for. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And like, for those of you that, were, that are going through this right now, stop it right now before it's too late and change your whole mindset as to how I just gave you the advice. I've already been through all that, guys. I'm teaching you from experience. I didn't go all the way towards like fucking marrying one, but I came pretty damn close to it and I would have made the biggest mistake in my life to do that and like lock myself down, taking care of other dudes' kids, you know, and like having to support a girl that has no like, uh, like no future pretty much, <clears throat> you know, so don't do it. I know it's hard when you're in the situation to escape it or get out of it, but you got to figure a way out now and start planning, especially if you're making a lot of money, you know, you got to protect that stuff. And that's what's going to keep getting you girls and you'll find, get yourself a high quality girl, like, like a girl that um, will care about you and like you for who you are and all that stuff. And they don't expect nothing and they're super grateful for anything you do and like and super simple and they make you happy they don't complain they don't demand they're uh super appreciative those are the kind of girls you want to go for so all right well that's it for now guys i uh talking for a long time now we're gonna go uh go prepare dinner and stuff she's probably gonna make us something she's been making us some guacamole and like she makes us pizzas and vegan stuff i've been like Cause that's pretty much all I got here. So she eats that with me and prepares that with me. So, all right guys, that's it for now. I'll talk to you soon. Adios, pura vida. You say adios, baby. Dar un beso. Uh. All right guys, it's finally here. I got the Jedi group open and I got a website put together for all you guys that can reach out to me instead of sending me an email. The website's 420john69.com and pretty much everything you need is listed out on the links above and the links links below. So if you're interested in a Jedi group, if you're interested in uh, getting help with a trip, relationship advice, credit card service, real estate, affiliate programs, pretty much anything that I'm talking about, relationship advice as well, business, investments, it's all on the website, so that way you guys can help me help you a lot faster. That way I don't miss out on any of the emails, and it'll help me stay in touch with you guys, even if something happens to the channel or the Instagram or whatever, if everything gets taken down or blocked by the platforms, I'll still have a way to get in touch with you guys. So go ahead and go to the website and pick whichever link that you need help on and fill out the information, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Look forward to seeing you there. All right, talk to you guys soon. Adios, pura vida. All right, guys, so... I'm putting together these groups, the, my Jedi Master Inner Circle. So there's gonna be two levels to it. You're gonna have the Jedi Masters, which are the guys that are making 100K or more per year, at least, and have been well-traveled, have a lot of experience, and know of different places that we can go to experience and find beautiful girls and be able to share amongst everyone and give advice to other people as well. And then we're also gonna have the young Jedis that maybe aren't as experienced or just starting out in life or are young and don't really have much money, but they wanna live this lifestyle. They're being inspired and they wanna start and learn and be able to communicate with each other. So that'll be the second level. And of course the Jedi Master level can will be in both so that you'll have the Jedi Masters also helping the young Jedis by answering questions uh, for people that are new and then the Jedi Masters, what we're gonna do is have like trips maybe once a year where all of us Jedi Masters come together and have go to a destination where we'll be able to experience all of this together and share and network and share financial advice, how to make money. It'll be how to make money, how to deal with breakups, how to meet girls, 
pretty much everything that you're seeing on my video my videos that i'm teaching we'll be able to network and do it in person and put put together these groups and meetings for people and kind of be my me as the connector connecting all of you guys together because i'm getting all these messages from people from all walks of life in different parts of the world and a lot of you guys tell me that you don't have anyone to share these experiences with or share your stories and share all the knowledge that you've uh, accumulated throughout the years and once you communicate with me it's like you're spilling your entire story because you're so excited to tell someone finally because there's no one else you can take. can't tell your friends, can't tell your family, and there's no one you can ask questions, there's no one you can uh, share these intimate details with. And so I wanna bring you guys together with other like-minded people that are watching my videos and kind of wanna live this lifestyle as well. And let me know which Jedi master uh, or Jedi part level in the inner circle that you wanna be in. There's gonna be either the young Jedi or the Jedi masters, and the Jedi masters is gonna be 500 for you guys to join that's the, the screening process and then we got the young jedis for 50 bucks that way it's affordable and the 500 is to screen out obviously if you're doing well 500 isn't much and then it keeps out the people that aren't serious it's kind of like the how to weed out the people that aren't really real and of course there's going to be moderation and there's going to be like con content moderation where i moderate who gets in and interview the people that want to come in to make sure they're real and that way everyone that's in the group is actually there because they want to be and that they share this similar outlook on life and want to live this type of life and level up even more make more connections make more friends kind of like me and Tim the 72 year old that you've been seeing interview and other people you haven't seen in my videos uh, that I hang out with it'll be kind of like being into the inner circle and make make these kind of bonds that will last a lifetime and these kind of memories that we can share together and have some awesome adventures together you guys will be invited once you pay the entrance fee and then we'll get you in all right guys that's it adios pura vida you say adios baby adios uh, <laughs> bye well like, guys if you uh coming down here to cancun playa del carmen i have friends down here as well that can take care of stuff if you're headed down to costa rica i got friends in costa rica that can help take care of the stuff you know help uh, assist with transportation and activities and lodging and things like that and then business that helped me live this life is the credit card service business so if you own a business and you're still paying the credit card fees you don't have to do that anymore stop wasting your money you could be enjoying it every month instead of like whatever you're paying to the bank a thousand two thousand to the bank every month you take it and go on a vacation look at the ocean how beautiful it is down here and the weather is perfect it's so early in the morning I'm already sweating it's tropical and like uh, people are swimming down there if you could see and I, the only thing I wish that was down here is the that there was more waves but like I said, if you own a business, uh, you don't have to pay for the fees. You can use it for vacation, take your family out, reinvest in your business, or whatever it is you want to do on with it. It's just it's way better than wasting it, paying it to the bank and getting nothing in return. So that's it. All right, that's it for now. Talk to you guys later. Adios, pura